do you program it? What is it? Okay, can you all see my slides? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, selamat malam, uh, tuan tuan dan puan puan. <laughs> Trust you had your dinner already. Um, okay, tonight um, we are continuing with our series on um, who is TNCC. Okay. So last uh, five weeks, we have covered our five core values. And I don't know, um, I, I trust that you have been uh, blessed and also at the same time challenged uh, to, you know, to be able to have these core values uh, in your life, especially in church and even in your private life. Um, but uh, I hope you are not overwhelmed because you know it's by the grace of god that we are able to do it it is um, by his strength that we are able to do it you know jesus was god-centered jesus was honoring he was impactful he was passionate he was supernatural so if jesus can do it we also can do it because we have the spirit of christ in us already amen and it's not, um, it's, um, you know, Jesus said that, you know, if you believe uh, you can also do even greater things than he, he did when he was on this earth. Amen. So uh, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Amen. So um, tonight we're going to look at our mission statement. Okay, our mission statement. We also have our vision statement. So you might be confused. Why is there a mission statement and also a vision statement? But just to briefly, uh, uh, you know, tell you the difference between the mission, our mission statement and a vision statement is the mission statement is the focus, our main focus that we want to do as a church now. Okay. And whereas the vision statement is about what we want to achieve, what we want to see happen in the future in our church. Okay, so we need to do uh, the things that we need to do now. Okay, that's our mission, and and in God's by God's grace, then we will reach our vision. Okay, and our vision statement will be uh, done by Pastor Kim uh, next week. So our mission statement is celebrating Jesus' finished work on the cross and living his supernatural life. Now, why did we choose this particular mission statement that, that is to celebrate Jesus' finished work on the cross? Uh, to answer that, uh, we need to look uh, uh, back at our history, the background of PNCC. Okay. Uh, Pastor Peter and Stephen, you know, they were actually formerly from another church. Uh, in fact, they were in their church uh, at that time, uh, I believe it was 30, 30 years. And all the children grew up in, in that church uh, and they served there. They were faithful serving in that church. And in fact, Pastor Peter was the founding uh, member of the church, one of the founding members of the church. So you would think that, you know, he has no reason to, uh, to uproot himself and start a new church. Uh, so Pastor Peter didn't say, oh, one day he woke up and said, oh, I, I need to start a new church and I need to be a, a pastor, you know. Uh, if that, that is not the reason why uh, TNCC was birthed. Uh, it was because Pastor Peter uh, had the revelation of the pure gospel of grace uh, that, you know, that he realized that, you know, uh, in general, the church had not been preaching and teaching the pure gospel of grace. You know, there was mixture, uh, mixture between uh, law and grace, between the 
new co old covenant and the new covenant. And so, you know, that got him, you know, thinking about, you know, how he can, you know, proclaim the gospel of grace. And so when a good friend uh, told Pastor Peter that he had a prophecy from God for Pastor Peter to, to start a new church, to come out and start a church and to preach the gospel of grace, uh, then Pastor Peter, Sipan and family uh, took that step of, bold step of faith to start PNCC, the New Covenant Church. So they had their first service, uh, I believe it was on 28th of October 2009. And uh, they had that, that service as, at Wisma Atria, uh, which is the old Wisma Atria before it was torn down and, and built, rebuilt again. And you can see from the picture that uh, their, their tagline was celebrating Jesus and his finished work on the cross. Uh, so you can see that uh, even at that, uh, from the very beginning, even though they didn't state it as the mission statement of the church, it was because of the, the finished work on the cross that you know Pastor Peter was led to start the church. So together with the family, uh, with some of his former ch church members and even of some Facebook friends, uh, they they you know they started their journey uh, on on this particular day. Then subsequently, more and more people joined. Uh, and uh, because of the preaching of the gospel of grace, uh, because I believe at that time, uh, it was the first uh, grace church in, in, at least in the Klang Valley, in Kitaling Jaya. And for me and uh, a group of us from our former church, we heard that there is a, a pastor uh, that started the grace church in Soon after, I think it was in January 2010, a uh, group of us also joined uh, the church and we have been there since, since then. Okay, So, um, uh, you know, it, it's really amazing. Now we look back, we fast forward 13 years later. This is TNCC today. Uh, the Lord has been faithful and good and... Uh, you know, we have moved, I think, four times, and this is uh, the, our, the, our, our final home. I mean, not final home, but our home at the moment because God has uh, given us this place as our home. Uh, you know, we bought this place. And, and uh, you know, we can see that uh, through the preaching of the gospel of grace, you know, God has blessed Pastor Peter himself, his family, and the church family and you know different ones have been blessed so much and i myself and my family have been blessed so much and in fact one brother told me that uh, after you know discovering the, the the gospel of grace you know he, he feels that he's so happy he's never been this happy uh, this free ever in his life you know and so god has been uh, blessing so many people uh, and and that is why uh, you know, uh, if you can look at our website, it says that TNCC is a church founded to preach the simple gospel of grace of Jesus Christ radically based on the new covenant without mixture. Okay, so uh, that is mentioned in, in our website. So that was the reason why church was was founded and that is the reason why today this is still our mission statement uh, that we want to celebrate uh, the finished work of Jesus on, on, on the cross so you ask me what is the what is the what is the uh, pure gospel of grace okay um, you, if I ask you is there any difference? Okay, after coming to TNCC and you have heard us preach every Sunday and compare it with 
uh, what you heard previously in maybe another church, are they the same? Is there any difference? Uh, or if you think you don't know whether there's any difference, okay, to you it might be the same. It sounds the same. There is no difference. Uh, then maybe I want to suggest to you, you, you uh, might not... Uh, truly understand what is the pure gospel of grace. Um, so whatever reason, uh, you know, whatever reason we need to know, because in order for us to be part of, uh, of our church mission statement, we first need to know what is the pure gospel of grace, what is the finished work on the cross. So we need to understand, we need to believe in it, and then, then we can run with it we can run with the mission, we can uh, do it, uh, we can proclaim God's word, we can shout out God's word, we can teach God's word, teach this gospel. Okay, so uh, I would like to encourage you if you have, uh, if you are not sure what really is the pure gospel of grace, I would highly recommend that you attend our discovery class. Okay, um, sorry. Okay, you attend our discovery class. This is our, I don't know if you can see, but I don't think you can. Okay. Um, if uh, I would really encourage you to attend this class because sometimes in church, um, you know, we don't have enough time to really uh, go deeper in, into the explanation of the pure gospel of grace. But in this discovery class, you will definitely have an opportunity to understand, to grasp, what it means uh, to preach the pure uh, gospel of grace, okay, without mixture, and which is radically based on the new covenant. Okay, so in order for us to understand uh, the pure gospel of grace, we need to know the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant, okay, uh, because the, we don't want any mixture in, in, the, in the gospel. We don't want any mixture of law and grace of old covenant and the new covenant. So the, the, the main term of the old covenant is if under Deuteronomy 28, if you obey uh, God's commandment, you will be blessed. But if you disobey, you will be cursed, you will be punished. Okay, So it is based on your our performance, your performance, it is based on what you do, okay? So generally, that is also what most, if not all religions teach, uh, you know, that you need to do good to get good. You need to do, if you do bad, you get bad. Yeah, it's like karma, okay? So, so um, this is the main term of the Okana. The main difference of the new covenant is that Jesus uh, has uh, Jesus has uh, obeyed the commandments of the law to the letter. You know, he was perfectly uh, he perfectly obeyed the law, and there was no sin in him. And and what what God did was he allowed Jesus to perform and obey uh, the law on our behalf, okay? So when, when God judges us, when God sees us, he sees Jesus performing and obeying the law on our behalf. Likewise, God also allowed Jesus to suffer the punishment of our sins on our behalf. So he took our place we were supposed to suffer and be punished for our own sins, but, but Jesus did it all for us on the cross. So you can see that uh, in the new covenant, God allows Jesus to represent us, to be a substitute for us. And, and so that is the main difference between the old and the new covenant. And in, in the new covenant, it's not so much we need to do, but we need to believe what Jesus has done. Then, uh, 
in the old covenant, the law was used to teach the people, but actually the purpose of the law was to bring the people to Christ, to come to the end of themselves and say that the law is too difficult for us to obey and to comply 100%. You know, we, we need grace, we need help, we need God to help us. And so when uh, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, 26, uh, when faith came, you know, when faith came uh, and was revealed, the law that was supposed to bring us to Christ uh, was taken away, you know. Therefore, now we, when faith has come, we are no longer under the tutor of the law. Now we are taught and we are led by the Holy Spirit when we believe. Amen. So is the old covenant still applicable? Definitely not because the Bible says that it has become obsolete because the new covenant has replaced the old covenant. Okay. So if if there was uh, no new covenant, then the old would still apply. So it's like, for example, if you have got a new job and you have a new employment contract, you know, you don't look at your old and uh, old jobs uh, employment contract to determine your rights and your obligations under the new job employment, isn't it? So you only look at the new covenant, a new uh, employment contract. So that's why we cannot mix the two. And, and we cannot merge the two into one and say this is part of the gospel. Then uh, the performance of the old covenant, it is impossible uh, for, for us to obey the law 100% perfectly. You know, um, God says that our righteousness is like beauty rags. Um, you know, there is none... The Bible says that it's done righteous. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So uh, God found fault in Hebrews chapter 8. God found fault with the old covenant because he knew that man was destined to destruction, destined to failure because they could never uh, obey and, and be made righteous to the, the law to obeying the law. And so God said that he in, in, initiated the new covenant. He says that I will do it this time for you. you know? I will uh, put my laws in your mind and write them on your hearts. I will be your God and you will be my people. And God also said that I will be merciful to your unrighteousness and your sin and lawless deeds, I will remember no more. You know, God is so good that uh, yeah, under the new covenant, God is responsible to save us, to bless us, to change us. It's nothing of ourselves. It is not because of how good we are, how well we perform, or how holy we are that we are blessed under the new covenant. So you can see the two differences and they cannot merge, they cannot be mixed up together. And that is why there must be no mixture in, 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 the, uh, in the gospel of grace. And, and um, you know, they think that uh, because the old covenant is in the New Testament and the new covenant is in the New Testament, and both are in the Bible. So because it's the word of God, therefore, you know, we, we, we take everything in and we believe everything that it applies to us. Uh, uh, that is not so. It applied to the people then there, but now it doesn't apply to us for the people now under the new covenant. So in Galatians 1, uh, verses 6 to 7, uh, Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who caught you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. So as I was saying, there is only one gospel and 
and and that gospel is not a gospel of mixture. Okay, if we add um, works into it, we add the old covenant into it, uh, then we are perverting the gospel of Christ. These Galatian Christians, you know, they they are how to say they are Christians who believe in the gospel, but somehow not too uh, long later, you know, they turn away so soon to a different gospel because of maybe wrong teaching or, uh, you know, wrong influence by other people. And so we have to be, we have to put uh, ourselves on guard that even though we know the gospel of grace maybe five years, ten years before, but we need to constantly remind ourselves, we need to constantly uh, you know, proclaim and declare the gospel of grace that so that we don't fall into the trap of, you know, uh, going, uh, diluting the gospel or perverting the gospel of Christ. You know, it can happen. You know, the, uh, that's how it happened initially. The early church were preaching pure grace, but you know, as time goes by, you know, as uh, the years go by and months go by. And uh, people, you know, start to introduce things uh, into the gospel, like saying, oh, you know, you must do this, you must do that. If not, God won't bless you. If not, God won't answer you. Or because you have sinned, that's why bad things happen to you. Uh, so, you know, uh, that could happen. And so we need to be careful of that. In Ephesians 8, uh, 2, 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved uh, through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So salvation is that it is only by grace, without any works. Um, it is a gift from God. We cannot earn it. Uh, religion says you, you can earn it by your good works, but, uh, but, but the gospel of grace says, no, you cannot earn it. You only can get it through faith. You believe God that he has saved you. And the word saved, sozo, is a Greek uh, word that not only means save you from your sin, but it also includes healing, uh, wholeness, uh, prosperity, success, you know. So, uh, you know, God's grace, God's salvation is not to just save us from our sins, but it's also to heal us. You know, he's, in Isaiah 53, it says that by his stripes that he bore on his back, uh, we are healed. He was made naked. He was made poor so that we can be rich. You know, so this is the full uh, works that Jesus did for us. You know, when you, uh, I like this example, when you buy a McDonald's meal, okay, you get uh, your burger, you get your fries, you get your drink, you know, the whole set, you know, when you purchase it. So likewise, you know, Jesus has, purchase our salvation for us you know he has he, he has purchased our, our our forgiveness you know the cleansing of our sins he has purchased for us healing for our our, our bodies he has put he has given us provision for our lack in our lives so you know that is the whole salvation that jesus has given to us so we need to realize that you know that that god is so good that it saves us uh, through faith and it is a gift uh, from, from him. So salvation is totally 100% by Jesus. So it's not about our obedience or good works. Uh, they do not count. And in Galatians chapter 5, Paul again says, Christ then becomes of no effect unto you, whosoever of you claim justification by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. So, Paul is saying that if you think that you are justified by the law, if you think that because you are good, because you, you pray, you read your Bible, you come to church, you serve in, in church, that's why God will bless you more than other people. Uh, or because if you have not done this or you have not done that, then God won't answer your prayer or you, you might suffer some sickness or you know, God is punishing you. So when you think like that, and when you uh, try to add 
to what Jesus has done, then Paul says that you have fallen from grace. You know, grace is on top, but because you want to be justified by the law, you want to add works to, to salvation, to his blessing, then you fall from grace, okay? And Christ then becomes of no effect on you. That means grace has no effect on you because you choose to do it on your own strength. You think that it is through your hard work, through your, your how good you are. And, and then that also will promote self-righteousness. And you will think that, oh, because I have been a faithful Christian for the last 30 years, that's why God has blessed me, God has done this for me and that for me. And so the, the, the adulation, the, the glory goes to you and not God. But when it is 100% by Jesus, then all glory will go to, to, to him. Even the fact that you are able to do good things is because of the grace of God. It is because of the strength of God's view. We cannot take any credit uh, for that. You know, It is because of his goodness that we can uh, be blessed and that we can do all things. And another aspect of the gospel, of pure gospel of grace, that is very important that is that we are forever forgiven in Colossians 1 14 it says for in, in the sun all our sins are cancelled all our sins are cancelled and we have the release of redemption through this very blood that means all our sins are, are the record of our sins are taken away all our past sins our futures, our present sins, our future sins have all been forgiven. Okay, and um, and you know this uh, this the, the 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 forgiveness of our sins, the redemption of our of our sins was through His blood. You know, Jesus didn't Jesus didn't uh, sweep our sins under the carpet. He didn't just close one eye and say, it's okay, you know, I'm so merciful, I'm so loving, uh, I'll just forgive all your sins, I'll cancel all your sin record. But if he did not do anything about it, he did not pay for it, he did not uh, pay the penalty of sin, then Jesus and God would be unjust. They would not be a righteous uh, thing to do. But indeed, God, Jesus did redeem us with his blood with his suffering, with his death on the cross. And then the other point is that um, we are forever righteous. Not only that we are forever forgiven, we are forever righteous. You know, we, we need to be righteous uh, before God. You know, no point getting our sins forgiven and then we continue to sin and then we get our sins get forgiven. You know, God wants us to to be righteous wants us to be transformed and and uh, but god has given us his gift of righteousness uh, so that you know we have a new identity we we are a new creation when we are born again that we have the righteousness of god in 2 corinthians 5 21 uh, paul says for he made him who knew no sin meaning jesus who knew no sin was righteous, is righteous, to be sin for us, then he became unrighteous. He, our sin was put upon him, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So there was a divine exchange when, when, when Jesus went to the cross, you know. He was right, totally righteous, totally uh, perfect. You know, he obeyed the law and fulfilled the law on our behalf. And uh, he was totally righteous, but he bore the punishment of our sins, you know, uh, that we might become the righteousness of God. So in exchange, we gave him our sins. He gave us his righteousness. And so today, the righteousness we have, it is of God. It is from Jesus. It is not our own. So when God looks at us today, he looks at us as if, uh, you know, we have the, as if that we are righteous in a sense that even though we still sin, 
you know, God looks still looks at us as righteous because He is looking at the righteousness of, of Jesus on us. It is like we are wearing a, a coat, a robe, you know, that covers our 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 sin. You know, when God sees us, He sees us righteous, He sees us perfect because Jesus was perfect, and we have the perfectness and the righteousness of God. Amen. So we are forever righteous. In Romans chapter 6, verse 8, it says, You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. So it doesn't mean that when we sin or we lose our righteousness, uh, you know, because we are righteous forever. You know, when we were slave to sin, let me ask you, were you able to free yourself from sin? Were you able to tell Satan, you know, I, I want to be free uh, from sin now. You know, I don't want to be a slave to sin. Can you do it on your own? No, you can't. You know, when you are a slave to sin, you are, you are, you are forever a slave to sin because unless some power or force greater than us rescue us. Okay? So we were, we were doomed to destruction. We were doomed to eternity. We were doomed uh, because our, our sin, you know, we were not able to fulfill the law, we were not perfect, uh, you know, we, and the wages of sin is death until Jesus came to rescue us and took our place, took our penalty, and gave us his righteousness. And today, because we have his righteousness, we have become slaves to righteousness. So if you are a slave to, to righteousness, you cannot lose your righteousness. Like how you could not lose uh, slavery to sin. Okay? So it is God's doing that now you, you, you are blessed to be a slave to righteousness because you can never be unrighteous anymore because Jesus is the one that made you righteous. Amen? So that's why we say that we are forever righteous. And the only criteria for us to be righteous is like how to be saved, to be forgiven, is to be is to receive it by faith. In Romans chapter 4, verse 3, what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Amen. So uh, the, the the fact that uh, you know Abraham uh, believed God. You know, he believed that God was a good God, that, you know, God was able to bring him out to a land that God would show him to be, make him a blessing to his family to the, and, and eventually to be a blessing to the whole world. And Abraham believed God and he obeyed and he moved from where he stayed. And because of that, God credited to him as righteous, you know, right, the righteousness of God. And that's the beginning of when you see that righteousness is not by, by works, not by justifying by the law, but by faith. You know, there was grace that was given to Abraham. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, you know, God is so good. God is so good gracious that today he has rescued us uh, from, from destruction, from our sin, and uh, he has given us his righteousness, you know, and uh, the Bible says that uh, we have a better covenant under the new covenant and with better promises, and you can see the, the benefits, the blessing continues, you know. Uh, today, because we are uh, saved, we are born again, and uh, we have received salvation, we are now deeply loved by God. We are highly favored. We are greatly blessed. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, God demonstrates his own love towards us that in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, God loved us even before we accepted him. When we were still sinners, you know, he, there was no guarantee that if God died for us, that we would respond to him, that we would believe in him, that we would love him back, you know. Uh, but God did it for the whole world, you know. Not, no, not uh, knowing, we, not, not uh, you know, 
uh, guaranteeing what who will will come to him, but he still did it for us. And that's how much God loves us. And in John, in 1 John 4, 10, it says, in this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. You know, it was God who first loved us. You know, in the old covenant, he says that we need to love God with all our heart, with all our might, with all our strength. Uh, but, you know, we could not do it under the law. You know, we had no power, we had no ability. But in the new covenant, God says, I have loved you first. You know, I have sent my son to make payment for your sins. You know, that shows that he, he, he loved us. He, he wanted to redeem us. You know, God wants us to experience his love. He wants us to believe that he loves us. Not just hate knowledge. You know, he wants you to experience his love so that if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. You can't love another until you have experienced God's love, until you know and know and believe and, and trust God that he loves you. You know, then you are able to love. No point in using your willpower, your, your discipline, your whatever that you try to work out to love somebody. We, 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 we can't love, you know, unless God gives us uh, the love that he, he wants to pour into us. So today, we are also highly favored. In Galatians 2, 4 to 6, but God made us alive together with Christ, raised him, us up together, made us sit together in the heavenly places. God raised Jesus and us from the dead. You know, we were dead in our trespass, but because Jesus died and rose again together, we also died and, and rose again. And we are seated together with him. We are seated together with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's a great honor. You know, it's, it's, it, we have great favor to be able to uh, be with Jesus and to sit with him okay, in the heavenly places. So, um, today, not only that we are saved, we, we have received uh, his gift of righteousness, but we also have favor from him. You know, favor in our lives, you know, in circumstances where the, the situation is against us, where we are the minority, we are the weaker party, uh, you know, we, we are inexperienced, uh, we, we are not the big boys in business. But God can grant us the favor to give us the promotion to deliver us uh, from our our situation, you know, uh, like how God granted favor to Joseph, even when he was a slave, when he was in prison and forgotten, you know, God granted him favor with Pharaoh so that he would become the prime minister of Egypt. In Psalms 5, 12, it says, Surely, Lord, you have blessed the righteous, and you surround them with your favor as with a shield. Okay? So God's favor is like a shield surrounding us. So no matter where we go, because we are righteous, we have the gift of righteousness, uh, God's favor is all around us. And uh, let's believe and expect this favor to be present in our lives, wherever we go, whatever we do, uh, whatever situation, the negative disadvantage situation that we have, God can turn it around for us because his favor, he promises that his favor surrounds us like a shield. And lastly, we are greatly blessed. In Romans 8, 17, it says, now if we are children, then we are heirs heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. You know, not only God has saved us from us, give us righteousness, now he has made us his children, we are part of God's family. Uh, you know, he, he has made us heirs of God and join heirs, co-heirs with Christ. So we have an inheritance, you know, God has prepared for us. So, you know, 
this is such a uh, wonderful uh, covenant that God has has has, has uh, initiated for us. This new covenant with better promises, uh, you know, for us than the old covenant. So do not go back to the old covenant. Do not mix the old with the new. Um, and and uh, you know, know that you are greatly blessed. Highly favored, favored and deeply loved. So that is the reason why we uh, are celebrating Jesus' finished work on the cross. Because this is really good news. This is really uh, uh, something that is so phenomenal that you know God, uh, is a great God that would 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 come down. As, as a servant, as a sacrifice for us, you know, that would lay down his life for us. And so that this is something that we can shout out, we can celebrate, we can preach, we can uh, proclaim boldly and loudly. You know, that is why uh, Pastor Peter and the family started the church because they wanted to celebrate this finished work on the cross. It reminds me of how Abraham was called by God to, to leave his country, to go to a place where God would show him that he would be blessed, that his family would be blessed, that his, um, uh, the whole world would be blessed through him. And, uh, you know, because Abraham believed that God was a good God, that God wanted uh, the best for him, and he would trust him with his life, with his family, you could uproot likewise what Pastor Peter did. You know, he believed in the gospel of grace that God is a good God, that he can be trusted, and that he can uh, and 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 uh, trust God for him to uproot himself and and go to a uh, to to start a church. You know, not knowing what will happen in the future. You know what uh, what God's going to do. You know, but all he knows that God is good and that he 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 will he will do it. You know. And uh, that that is why uh, Pastor, I believe Pastor Peter took that step of faith because he believed that God is a good God, Amen. And and so uh, that's, that is why till today, you know, this is our mission statement. This is why we exist as a church is to celebrate the finished work on the cross, Amen. So by believing and celebrating Jesus and his gospel of grace, you know, I, I and, and that, we are, that we will continue, you know, to be faithful to our mission statement, okay? So we cannot take it lightly. We cannot, uh, you know, be, be uh, indolent or, or, or lazy or, or, or having um, uh, an indifferent view of the gospel of grace, but we need to continue to be faithful to our mission statement and, and not uh, not allow mixture to come in, not allow our works to come in, not allow self-righteousness to come in and to, to lift up people to grace and to you know to uh, and to take our focus off Jesus. Then I believe we can live out our core value uh, that God wants us to have, you know, that we can live out our mission, our vision, uh, which we will learn next week. So the next part uh, of our mission statement is the living in a supernatural life. Okay, last week, uh, Brother Matthew uh, brought us to this part of the core value of supernatural life, how we can live the supernatural life. All I want to say is that uh, uh, that you know what is needed is uh, the Holy Spirit. Okay, you know, living the supernatural life is no longer optional. I mean, it is not optional from day one. You know, that's God's purpose and plan that we live the supernatural life. In Galatians four thirty one. So then, believers, we who are born again, we born from above. Spirit, spiritually transformed, renewed, set apart for his purpose, are not children of a slave woman, natural, but of the free woman, the supernatural. You know, we are all children of a supernatural birth. We are born of the Holy Spirit, 
born again to live the supernatural right we were we were created by the spirit we are a new creation you know um and and uh, so so you know we need to change our thinking first of all we really need to renew our minds that we are destined to live in the supernatural uh, and you need the holy spirit you need his anointing you need his leading his teaching his wisdom his grace his power his peace his comfort the gifts that he uh, has given to us and and to live and to have the fruit to live this supernatural life um, you know now we are in the great reset after the covid you know for the two years you know the world has changed uh, there's a reset in, in, in the economy in, in the financial system uh, in in our workplace now we can work from home you know and, and things are you know we buy things online more now and we use less cash now and uh, and you know uh, even the church there's a reset in the church you know people choose some not to come back to church but to go online and church might not even be important to them or to even to, to, to attend on a Sunday they might just uh, attend church online on any other day at their convenience so there is a great reset and there are great challenges that are facing us you know um, there's sickness there is lack there's uh, a lot of uh, wars that are going on and therefore it is not optional for you to live in the natural you need to live in the supernatural that is what we have been destined to to do okay and we need to live in the supernatural so that we can overcome and reign reign over whatever that you know that is uh, is uh, is facing us you know our wrong thinking sickness lack fear you know our, our, our bad behavior our temper our laziness our addictions our problems difficulties the hatred in this world the discrimination that and the injustice and the evil that is around us you know all the more we need the supernatural power of the holy spirit the same power that raised jesus from the dead is in us and we need to realize we need to change our thinking that we can we cannot settle for the natural anymore every day is a day of living the supernatural until it becomes natural nature to us, a second nature to us amen and uh, and and uh, uh yeah i just like to encourage all of us you know that we, we expect god to to intervene expect god to to overcome for us expect god to uh do the impossible expect god to deliver us from our problems you know expect god to uh heal us you know because he has already provided healing for us you know and and that we can have favor we can have uh blessings in the midst of the darkness in the world and that we can bring light and hope to people in the midst of darkness and difficulties so uh just really like to encourage all of us to do that and lastly you know uh, this is taken from again from the website of our church pncc is a grace-based community where jesus and his finished work on the cross is lifted up in every part of our worship and work amen so we need to to uh, preach it we need to teach it we need to share it to our friends our neighbors uh, that's how i got to know the gospel of grace is through the sharing of the word you know um, and everyone is welcome into the oasis of rest and care you know because jesus never never uh, never uh, chase anybody out because you know they were not all together in their lives but jesus always welcomes sinners welcome those who need help uh, and then as you know we can learn and experience the new life we have in christ together you know uh, you know god god wants to transform us you know not, not to continue to live in sin 
but that uh, our lives will be transformed. But he invites everybody to come to him. Amen. And everything we do, our worship, our ministry, our giving, is not an obligation anymore, but a joyful outflow and the spirit that respond to what Jesus has done for us. This is how uh, you know, uh, the different ministries in our church was was started. You know, everybody was a volunteer, and uh, you know we were not forced to do it. And uh, we, uh, you know, we do it because we want to, not because not because we have to, not because we need to uh, collect points from God. Uh, we, we didn't do it because uh, out of guilt, out of condemnation, uh, out of trap of not being blessed by God. No, we do it because we have been blessed so much by God. We do it because we have been loved by God. We have been greatly forgiven by God. And that is the real motivation of serving in church. I, I truly believe that there's no other way that you can serve uh, in a lasting and, and, and joyful manner is true when you have experienced and, and enjoyed the grace of God, you know, that, that is the only way we can serve. And that is the only way God wants us to serve. And no other way, uh, you know. And, and so, um, so come as you are, see Jesus, and let his grace transform you from inside out. Amen. So God is good. And uh, I just pass the time now back to John. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pastor Alex, for that session. So now we have uh, question time. If you have questions, please type it in the chat box and I'll read it out for Pastor Alex. You've just talked to us about the mission statement. Yeah. What I like very much the analogy Pastor Alex is saying that when we get a new job, we just look at the new job description and totally discard the old old job descriptions. Yeah, that is very clear to me. Yeah. So anybody else have uh, uh, any questions for Pastor Alex? Okay, so if not, looks like the mission is very clear, Pastor Alex. We all know what we have to do so that we can achieve the vision which uh, Pastor Clint will share with us next week. Amen, amen. Yeah, so last call. Anyone want to type in the question? All right, and then there's no point in uh, keeping you all here. So I encourage you to unmute your microphones and say thank you to Pastor yeah, Alex. John, John, before, before hmm. we close, I just want to remind all of us again. So uh, if uh, you know you really want to uh, know the gospel of grace, please come and join us at the Discovery class. It's still on uh, on, on Sunday. Uh, you still can come and join. You will never be disappointed because uh, that is the basis of our walk with God. And uh, you know, you, you get you, you'll be uh, blessed, truly blessed uh, when you go through that course. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so here you go. Unmute your microphones and show your appreciation to Pastor Alex. Thank you, Pastor Alex. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Pastor thank you. Alex. Thank you. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, John. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.